In this edition of Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist, we're going to look at the Wayfarer model rocket from Apogee Components. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today we are going to unbox the Wayfarer rocket from Apogee Components. Um, as you can see, it comes in a plastic bag uh, with a nice colorful, what we call a face card. that gives you some advertising information about the rocket. You know, it's like a big and impressive rocket for beginners. It has large parts, uh, which you'll see as we open this up. Um, it also lists the rocket motors on here and some of the required tools and materials that you might need to put this together. So let's go ahead and open this up. And let's go and see what's inside. Okay, so the first thing we notice is this plastic nose cone. Now this is blow molded plastic made out of styrene. Styrene paints really well. Um, it's not like some uh, plastics where you paint them and then the paint will start chipping off. This is going to stay on forever. Um, it does come with a transition and this transition is not needed to build this particular kit. Um, it's just molded as one piece um, and you just snap them apart to remove them. Um, you'll notice that it has these large eyes on here that makes it really easy to get your parachute strings through there and the shock cord so you can tie it on nice and easy and it's really big and fat so it's really strong you're not going to have any problems with that breaking on you and a nose cone floating away uh, from the rest of the rocket so that's the nose cone um, also we look inside and we see we have paper tubes uh, this is your main body tube um, that the nose cone will go into um, and it also has uh, this smaller tube right here, and this is your engine mount tube. Um, this diameter of this is 18 millimeters, so this rocket is going to fly on 18 millimeter motors. So you can fly from an Estes A A8-3 or Quest A6-4 all the way up to a D um, that will fit in here. So this rocket has, you know, four different sizes plus a variety of uh, motors in each category, so there's a lot of different motors that this rocket can fly on. Uh, also inside, we'll take a look here, see what we got. Oh, things are want to roll off the table. Um, these here are our centering rings, and they're uh, actually um, this one here is going to be your engine block um, that keeps the engine from sliding all the way through. It also does come with a a metal engine hook, there it is right there. This is the metal engine hook um, that it also um, prevents the motor from going through or going backwards and it has a little spring clip on it um, so that you can get your thumb under there to take the rocket motor in and out real easy. Um, this green ring right here will be to hold this ring, uh, the engine hook down um, so that it can't be pried up because um, you don't want that to happen. Um, and then you also have, um, these are laser cut centering rings for your body tube. Um, and these are made out of cardstock, which is plenty strong for a rocket of this size, even with the D motors. Um, this little piece right here is called the launch lug. Um, that is used, that's glued onto the side of the rocket. And that's what goes onto the launch rod that guides the rocket um, on that first few feet of flight to make sure that the rocket is going in the direction that we want it to go. So don't lose that little piece. That's the little one that's always easiest to lose. Uh, this right here is a Kevlar shock cord and this is like really heavy duty shock cord. I'm surprised at this. Normally for this size kit we would use a hundred pound but this is 300 pound Kevlar shock cord. So let me just double check to make sure Yep, it shows it right here on the instructions. A um, 300 pound Kevlar cord. So <laughs> we're giving you the really good stuff on that kit. Um, 
And it's nice and long. It says here on the instruction, it's seven feet long. So that's taller than my wingspan here. Um, and that allows that the nose cone to come off and slow down without zippering the body tube. So that's your shock cord. Um, also in here, we have a plastic parachute. Um, let's see if it's one of these. How do I open this up? There it is. It's got one of these little resealable bags. Um, and inside here is the string and the uh, reinforcement rings that go onto the corners of the parachute. Now this parachute is a big one, uh, but you're not going to use the full size in this kit. Um, we call this the cut to size parachute. You can see it's really colorful. Uh, but then along the edges, there are different cut lines. So you can have an 18 inch, a uh, 15 inch or 12 inch. And I believe this kit um, would use the either the 12 or the 15. So we can take a look at this in here. Just double check. Um, it says to cut it to the 15 inch mark. Um, so you'll be cutting along that center one right there. Um, and then the reinforcement rings go on the corners and then the string here is tied on to those corners. Now this is cotton string. Um, and you'll notice that that's a little bit thicker than string that you get in other manufacturers' parachutes. Um, not only is it stronger than other strings from other parachutes, um, it's actually easier to tie. And that's really good for kids because tying knots can be hard, except for when they're on their shoelaces. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there's the string for the parachutes and that's really nice stuff. Um, this here is the balsa fin sheet and I can see from the thickness, this is one eighth inch thick. It's also laser cut balsa. Um, it has the, uh, the name of the kit that's etched onto it along with the part number. So if you break a fin, uh, you have that part number there, you know which one to reorder. Uh, but these fins, because they're so thick, they're gonna stay on the, the tube better because there's more gluing surface area. Um, and we also made a video at Apogee Components called, you know, how to put on fin fillets. Um, as I've taped this, um, that video has just been released. So now we, I can direct you to that video um, to, to show you how to keep your fins on forever. Um, if you make a good fin fillet, they'll stay on a long time. Um, again, um, this was the face card. And then this here is the decals. Um, and these are like sticker type decals, but they're made out of material called vinyl, which is a plastic. Um, and that's really durable. So they don't scuff easily and they're easy to put on. Um, and then there are um, three fins on this rocket, but six fin decals. So there's one for each side. And that is pretty unusual in a rocket kit um, because a lot of manufacturers will skimp on the decals. Um, and if you look at the, uh, the paint scheme here, um, on this rocket, you'll just paint it blue and then add the decals and you'll, your rocket will look pretty much exactly like what's shown here on the package. So this is a really good rocket that decorates really easy thanks to the decal sheet and it's going to turn out really nice. Um, also in the kit, um, I don't know if I should show you this, but uh, in this package we include a coupon for a free display stand. So once you get your rocket built and you've flown it and you say, hey, this rocket, it looks too good to just throw into a drawer. I want to display it. So we have a display stand coupon that you can get with your next order. So this was the Wayfarer rocket kit from Apogee Components. My name again is Tim Van Milligan. And yes, I am a real rocket scientist. Um, so thanks for watching. May the wind be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.